if I need to explain the concept of H mole, high density form mole or molar pregnancy in 90 seconds, I would only tell two rules. The two rules would explain anything and everything of molar pregnancy. The rule number one is this, that the fetus which is growing in the mother's body, home uterus, in the fetal development is mostly contributed by maternal gene, but the placenta, which is also there during the time of pregnancy, its growth is usually contributed by the father's gene. This is the rule number one you need to understand. That means father's genes contribute to the growth of placental tissue and mother's gene grow, contributes to the growth of the fetal tissue mostly. Rule number one. I would connect it with rule number two later. Please keep it in mind. And the rule number two is this, that in a growing embryo, in a growing fetus, we basically expect that there should be one is to one contribution. That means almost equal contribution of the fat, the fetal, the mother's maternal and the paternal, father's gene. That should be there. But this basic law of nature is violated during the time of molar pregnancy. Molar pregnancy is an abnormal form of fertilization. And in this form of abnormal fertilization, fertilization what occurs? Usually, the, in the growing embryo, in the fetus, mostly the genetic material is contributed by the father. In case of complete molar pregnancy, it is contributed 100% by father. I would explain this thing on the whiteboard later. Uh, and in the partial molar pregnancy, usually the 66%, 66.6%, 66 66% is contributed by the father, that means two thirds, and only one third is contributed by the mother, 33.33%. Now that also values the basic nature of the law. As I told you, it should be 50-50 contribution, one to one contribution of the DNA content from the father and from the mother. So as there is not there, that's why uh, this molar pregnancy is not viable actually. Uh, following the nature of the law. So now this you understand that as the genetic material is mostly coming from the father in this condition, either 100% or 66.66%, that's why the, there is more placental growth occurring in this pathology. That means hydrodiform mole or H mole is basically a placental pathology where there is a proliferation of the trophoplastic layer and the chorionic villi that becomes edematous. So these placental tissues overgrowth is occurring because if you look at the core of this disease, the core of the disease is that, that the, in the embryo, in the fetus, that basically there is contribution from the paternal gene, father's gene, either 100% or 66%. And as I mentioned in the rule number one, who basically contributes in the placental tissue development, father. And that's why in hydrophobic mole, basically you get abnormal placental proliferation and the trophoplastic proliferation. That is the core idea. And if you understand these two roles, actually many things would be explained, which I would explain in, the, uh, in a moment. Now, coming to that, that as you know, that hydrophobic mole is a form of gestational trophoplastic disease because it's a placental pathology and seen during the gestation during the time of pregnancy because placenta is also seen during the time of pregnancy. It's quite logical, actually. And Second thing, it's a trophoblastic disease because there's a trophoblastic proliferation occurring. What is trophoblast? As you know, it's a, it's a placental component, actually. A trophoblast, trophom, may comes from a Greek word, trifion, means feeding, and they're basically blast because it basically lines the blastocyst, seen from the blastocyst stage. So that's a trophoblast blood. So basically, this is a placental tissue layer in simple terms, which feeds the embryo. And that's why that's the trifion, the feed, the trophoderm is there. And this layer abnormally gets proliferated in this disease. That's why this condition during the time of pregnancy in the placenta, that's why this is called gestational trophoblastic disease. And that's this, the pregnancy which is associated with this, that is called molar pregnancy. That's the basic idea. Because I told you this molar pregnancy is an abnormal form of fertilization where there is this imbalance in the genetic material which is seen in the fetus. And the imbalance is shifted more in the paternal gene. There is more amount of paternal gene. And how it occurs, the complete and incomplete mold, as I think you all know that there are two classic forms of the uh, H mole is there. One is called complete H mole and another is called incomplete H mole. And I'm going to explain this on the whiteboard in a moment. So uh, complete H mole means basically that there's a complete contribution of the genetic material complete contribution of the genetic material from the father. That's why it is called 
complete gene, uh, H mode. So let's start with explaining the genetics of the complete H mode. And it's very simple if you understand the basic concept which I told. Complete H mole is basically seen when an empty ovum, I'm writing E because this is empty ovum, is fertilized by one sperm. It could be 23X or 23Y. Most of the time this occurs and there is actually their genetic material gets duplicated, this 23. And there is nothing there, this is zero actually inside. So now as a result of this thing, what would happen if this could be either 23X or 23Y because you know the sperm usually either have 23X or 23Y. So if the 23X duplicates, what would happen? 23X plus 23X is equal to 46XX. Twenty three Y plus twenty three Y could result also in forty six Y Y, but this form is lethal. This is not typically seen there. Another way, the complete molar pregnancy is possible that there is one two sperm actually fertilizes together like this two sperm fertilizes together. one empty ovum. In that case, what would happen? I just need to add up 23X plus 23Y plus zero because, because ovum has no contribution here actually, genetic material, the DNA material. It would be 46XXY. I'm writing at the top because there's no place to write there. And uh, so this, if it is two, both of the sperms are 23X, it would be 46XX. And 46YY is not possible, I told you, it is lethal. So ideally, there are the complete mole, the concept is this, that there is complete contribution in the genetic material is from the father. That is the core concept that you need to understand. That means in this 46XX or 46XY, there is 100% contribution from the father and 0% from mother. So what is the ratio of father's and mother's genetic material in the complete mode? That means 100 is to 0 because everything is from father. There's nothing from mother. And this violates the basic law of the nature because I told you that ideally there should be 50-50 contribution. 50% from father, 50% from the mother. And that's why this is not viable at all. And if you apply this concept, you can also understand many things, many differentiating features between complete and partial mole. I'm talking about partial mole in a moment. Complete mole, what do you see? Complete mole, there is a complete absence of the fetus. Why? What I told you, the rule number one. I told you the rule number one is this, that the fetus growth is basically from the maternal gene and placental growth is basically from the father's gene, paternal gene. So how much maternal gene is there in the complete mole? Zero percent. And how much there is from father's gene? Hundred percent. Who contributes in the placental tissue growth? Father. So that's why entirely you would be getting placental tissue proliferation in the complete mole. And mother gene basically contributes in the fetal tissue. So the fetal tissue is absent in the complete mole. Why? Because the genetic contribution, the DNA contribution from the mother is 0% from in the complete mole. And if it is 0%, I told you the rule number one to understand the whole everything and anything of each mole is that that maternal tissue contributes to the Maternal DNA material contributes to the development of the fetus. So as there is 0% from the maternal DNA, there will be 0% development of the fetus. So in complete molar H mole, what we see, we see 
that there is only abnormal placental tissue development. There is diffuse proliferation of the trophoblastic tissue, and there will be abnormal hydropixolium diffusely of the chorionic villi. This is everywhere, and there's no normal fetus tissue. If you compare and contrast this with the partial H mole or incomplete H mole, you'll be getting there that there is some amount of fetal tissue there because there is also some maternal contribution there, which I'm going to explain in a moment. And another thing is also explained by this concept that P57, which is a marker, immunostimical marker, this is usually expressed by the maternal allele. And there is maternal allele this gene is missing here in this portion in the complete mole. So they are basically complete moles are negative for P57, but it would be positive in the partial mole. Now I'm going to explain the concept of the partial mole and then I would summarize. So in this complete H mole concept, you understood this, that complete H mole occurs when an empty ovum, when the maternal DNA material is missing or inactivated, that either gets fertilized by one sperm, which reduplicates its chromosome material, which occurs in most of the cases, or it is fertilized by two separate sperms diaspermic fertilization. In both the cases, there is 0% contribution from the mother DNA material. In both the cases, the chromosome would be 46XY or 46X it would be deployed. That's why this is a key karyotyping differentiating between complete and partial mole. Complete H moles are always deployed because it's 23X, it's either reduplicating but there is zero contribution from the mother. So obviously it will remain as 46. Either two separate one, two separate sperms are, they are adding up 23 plus 23, 46, or they are reduplicating 23 into two is equal to 42, but they're still remaining as 46. That's why complete H mole is deployed. Complete H mole is deployed. 46XX. Now I would discuss about this. I've cleared this and would discuss about the concept of the incomplete H mole or partial H mole. So in the partial H mole, what's occurring? Partial H mole, the ovum is not empty. It has 23X inside, unlike the complete H mole. And now the same story is getting repeated actually, that one sperm is there, which can be 23XX and 23Y. It could be 23X or 23Y because in sperm, you know that both are possible. So either it could be fertilized by two different sperms or one sperm which is reduplicating is chromosome. So net result would be 23 plus 23 plus 23. So typically you'll be getting 69. It could be XXX, it could be XXY, it could be XYY really, but not usually YYY, because I told you that is fundamentally lethal. That's possible. So mostly get XXY, 69, XXY, or XXX, XXY and sometimes XYY, but not YY. The key here is to understand not only the triploid, the key here is to understand this, that out of 69, how much is contributed by father? Father's contribution is F. His contribution is 46 out of 69, which means 66%. 66.6% roughly. And what is the contribution of the mother? 23 out of 69. That means 23 out of 69 means one third, 33.33%. This is percent sign. So now you can connect this with the concept, the rule number one and two, which I told. What I told the rule number one, that the placental tissue growth is mostly contributed by the father. And 
fetal tissue growth is mostly contributed by the maternal gene now in incomplete or partial mole father is mostly contributing that means 66.66 percent two third of the genetic material is contributed by the father 46 out of 69 but still mother is also contributing 23 out of 69 that means one third 33.33 percent one third means 33.33 percent and that's why there's a little bit of fetal tissue development is occurring in the partial or incomplete mole a basic gross difference between complete and incomplete mole i think you have read that in complete mole there is complete absence of fetal tissue and in incomplete mole there is still some tissue fetal tissue part is seen now it's not viable actually why that occurs because in incomplete h mole there is one third contribution genetic contribution from the mother and mother contributes basically to the fetal development so mother is still contributing one third but father is contributing more two third that's why excessive placental tissue proliferation occurring and little bit amount of fetal tissue proliferation is occurring but still it's violating the rule that one is to one 50 50 contribution person contribution from the father and mother that's not viable it's an abnormal form of fertilization and as p57 that immunostimical marker is expressed by the maternal allele maternal allele is here because the maternal genetic component is here that's why incomplete mole is basically positive for p57 by an immunostimical marker you can also differentiate this thing but this would be absent or negative in the complete age mole because you know that there's no maternal allele expression there so by understanding this basic concept actually that you understand and where there will be diffuse overall placental proliferation between complete age mole because that is entirely contributed by the paternal gene so if you understand the basic concept it's very easy to understand the everything so here i'm also summarizing before i uh, discuss everything in nutshell that here i told you about the incomplete age mole incomplete age mole occurs when ovum is not empty unlike complete age mole here it, it has genetic matter 26 and it is either fertilized by one two sperms or fertilized by one sperm which is reduplicating its material so ultimately it's 23 plus 23 plus 23 is equal to 69 it becomes typically triploid typically i'm saying it would be triple x six nine triple x six nine x x y and x y y and in this the genetic contribution is 66.66 percent from the father and 33.33 percent is from the mother and that explains three things that why there is some fetal tissue there because fetal tissue development requires maternal gene and some maternal gene is still there 33.3 percent so it's not viable it also explains why it is p57 positive it also explains why that this is usually you see fetal tissue in the incomplete age mole and also there is why there is focal proliferation not everywhere because their mother father is not the hundred percent contributed in the cases of this kind of uh, incomplete age mole so now if i summarize the key concepts again now i summarize another thing you need to keep in mind before, while i differentiating i already told you the key differences between the complete and each incomplete h mole that complete h mole usually as it's a placental tissue and 100 percent is the contributing is father so abnormal proliferation this complete h mole has a higher chance of developing to the choriocarcinoma so c for c some people they remind in they keep it in mind this way because c for complete h mole and c has higher chance of c that means choriocarcinoma c for choriocarcinoma which is a cancer malignancy which arises from the gestational trophoblast tick disease which can turn into a cancer choriocarcinoma and choriocarcinoma can metastasize to the lungs and the vagina this is a typical uh, cancer of the this example of uh, gestational trophoblastic neoplasia which can arise from a molar pregnancy or h1 so in the summary what i told you but i'll be doing uh, the session on the molar pregnancy and the other features of the gestational trophoblastic disease and other intellectual but what i told you here the key concept is that gestational trophoblastic disease is a form of disease which is seen in pregnancy it's a basically a placental pathology placental disease which is seen during the gestation time of pregnancy and this occurs due to abnormal proliferation of the placental tissue trophoblast why because this disease this group of diseases is mostly contributed by abnormal content of the father's gene paternal gene in the embryo and as i mentioned you that you need to understand two rules rule number one that in a, in a fetus when it is growing in the 
mother's womb. The placenta is also there. The placental growth is basically contributed by the father's gene and fetus's growth is mostly contributed by the mother's gene. Now, as this condition, mostly in the embryo, the genetic material is mostly contributed by the father. That's why there is abnormal proliferation of the placenta and the specifically placental part is trophoblast. That's why this is gestational trophoblastic disease. And I also highlighted the key differences and the genetics between complete age mole and incomplete age mole. Complete age mole occurs when an empty ovum is fertilized. Empty ovum means which has a 0% genetic material from the mother is fertilized by one sperm which reduplicates, becomes double or two separate sperm. Ultimately, 23 into 2 or 23 plus 23 is equal to 46. So they are typically diploid. On the other side, in incomplete H mole, there is usually 20, an ovum which is not empty, unlike the complete H mole. That is getting fertilized by two separate sperms or one sperm is reduplicating. Ultimately, 23 plus 23 plus 23. This 23 of the ovum was not there in the complete H mole. So altogether, it is becoming 69. And it's typically triploid, triploid in case of incomplete H mole. That is the reason why the Incomplete H mole is typically triploid and complete H mole is typically diploid. And I also explained that why there is fetal tissue is absent in the complete H mole because fetal tissue requires maternal gene contribution. Maternal gene contribution is 0% in complete H mole. There's no fetal tissue is there. And it also explains that why there is diffuse, more extensive uh, placental tissue proliferation occurs in complete H mole because placental tissue proliferation is contributed by the father's gene. Paternal gene. Paternal gene is 100% contributed in the complete age. And it also explains why there is P57 immunostemical marker positivity in the case of incomplete age mole and why it is negative. It's not expressed seen in case of complete age mole because this is expressed by maternal allele, which is not seen or expressed in the complete age mole. So this is the first of my lecture, insta lecture on the H mole, on the concept of the molar pregnancy. And I'll continue to do other lectures on this. This is a very interesting topic to discuss. And thank you very much for listening.